<laughs> um, so welcome to Global Chekhov Initiative. And I'm very grateful and excited and delighted. Today we have two wonderful teachers. We have Bethany Caputo and Don Arnold. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I think I'm just going to give the, the space for you to take it right now. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi to some faces I have not seen in a while. <laughs> oh. um, don't, do, shall I just start? Or, yeah, okay, great. Okay, hey, everybody. Um, <clears throat> look, we're just going to dive right in. So, sit if you haven't sat. Um, you know, it's such an interesting thing. We'll talk a moment today about this camera and this relationship to this camera and how to maybe think about it a little bit differently. Um, but it's no small thing that I speak into this thing and there's nothing back, you know, there's nothing back. And I think that there's a way in which Chekhov helps us with that. You know, it's maybe radiation, um, but it also, you know, it requires the imagination to help us along with that. So as I'm sitting here and I'm beginning, I go, oh yeah, I don't get to feel Gretchen and Ellen and Hadar, and, <laughs> you know? So it's interesting. So where to begin? All right, so sit here. And uh, I want you to think about crossing the threshold right now, just slightly, a little slightly differently. So instead of um, leaving something behind, See if there's a way, maybe you have to kind of sit on the edge of your seat or something, but see if there's a way that right from listening, Bethany, can come a gradual threshold, which is to say it takes me with me into readiness. And maybe you even try that a time or two so that there's kind of, you know, unfocused or receiving, you know, and then there's this shift and maybe it even takes us forward the tiniest bit, but it takes all of us with us. You know, we'll work today starting from exactly where we are in the exact rooms that we're in. And there's something of acceptance there's something of accepting this situation that then from even right in this situation, not in a fantasy studio, but in our rooms, my kitchen, I'll bring all of me. And when I say all of me, I just had to get in touch with my hips a moment, you know? So feel the bottoms of your feet. Feel the bottoms of your feet. Mine feel really far away right at the moment. So feel your ass, feel where your ass hits the chair. And let's say that that's the bottom of us for a moment. Like that, let's say that's our feet. Ah, okay. And so then I have this kind of upper body. So here it is, and maybe it even opens up the tiniest bit, just, but it's no different than where I was before. It's just that now I'm kind of willing and, desirous to be whole. So then feel the top of the head. Feel the ends of the fingertips. Maybe those arms dangle down. Oh, that's nice. And then venture down to the bottom of the feet. And feel the kind of whole of you, even in this somewhat folded position. And now just lean forward the tiniest bit out into the front space. And then come back right to the middle of you. And then lean back the tiniest bit. Maybe even your gaze looks up a little bit or something of you is aware of the space behind you. It's so slight, so easy. 
and then come right back to the middle, right in yourself. And even right from here, just open the arms the tiniest bit, easy, easy. Begin to get curious about your space. As you yourself, your whole willing self, agrees with the space that we're gonna to work together. And then just stand up. And come back to, come to a kind of standing. And just right here, feel the top of your head. Feel the bottom of your feet. Feel your ass too. It's there, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Feel the tips of the fingertips. And then in your own way, however you like to do it, you will cross a kind of threshold, but do something where it's a gradual cross, where it doesn't deny or leave behind anything. It kind of carries the whole of you with you. So that it's a, a kind of readiness that takes into account all of us, all of our situation, and all of our kitchen. And then just ever so easily, in your own time, however long that takes you to do, ever so easily just do this thing where you open up a little bit to the right, but at the same time, you're kind of just the most gentlest of gentle giving, you're also receiving. So it's a curiosity. It's like the activity of curiosity. So just ever so slightly, just open to the right, and right at the moment that you're giving, you're also taking in a little bit. It might even shift your gaze. It's so easy. We're just easy. And, and to the left. Taking the time to, to gently give and also to receive. It's, it's a curiosity and up, and down, and out into the front space, out into the wall or window or and taking that extra moment to also receive from. And back. And then let this curiosity just observe your room. Let this curiosity just look you around the room for a bit. Notice an object in the room. Name it. Notice another object in the room and name it. And another. Now go back to one of these objects. See that it could be something else and name it.
and another. See that it could be something else and name it. <laughs> And now come back to this standing place, right in the middle. You're somewhere in relationship to this room. Feel yourself as the center of this room, even if you're standing off, but feel yourself, even if you take a step forward, feel that it has consequence on this space because you are the center of the space itself. There's an agreement we're making. There's a kind of contract. This space is going to be space in which we move and it's there to support you. Just do a little breath and send a little bit of yourself to a far corner. <sighs> <sighs> And if you send something behind you, don't turn back to send it. Send it behind you, feel it back. Do it again, because it feels good. And if you send yourself out, ha, huh, stay out there a minute. I think the sides of us don't get as much attention. And I think it's pretty, uh, a pretty interesting space, right? Our breadth, our width, it's really popular to be very narrow, right? But ha, huh, wouldn't it be great if it was pretty popular to be wide or to take up that space on either side of us? It's our breadth. See if you can feel that. See if, see if, wow. Huh, just because we're easy and we're not pushing it, just because it feels good. See if you can, ah, just permeate so easily through the walls a little bit. Ah, see if you could get down the street a little bit. <laughs> what if you were to go out to the horizon line? Oh my gosh. Whew. Be right where the sky meets the water. And then just slowly, slowly, it's so easy. Slowly, slowly, just begin to turn your arms so slowly as if you're the center of the clock and the arms are moving. And as you move, it's hard, right? I have to go back here because I was talking, so I distracted myself. And maybe, you know, they need to relax. That's fine. Oh, human beings, the human condition, right? But then, wow, you go right out again and you're there. Maybe you're not even at the horizon line. It doesn't matter. But there's a little bit of you curious about that side space. And as the arms move, just bring a little bit of that sense of, width, right, through this dimension. <laughs> ah, and then it goes to the front space and it's a little bit different and maybe we change our arms. But just a little sense of this and then they move again to complete our sphere. Yeah, good. And now just Easy, easy, easy. Now we're gonna do something, it'll look like a push, but that's not the intention. Just move a little bit of the space out to the right. And it might not even be move, right? How much could you be in that width and that breadth and just easily go? And to the left. And up. And what if the space was complicit? What if the space liked it and forward? <sighs> what if it was like, is that all you got? That's awesome. <sighs> right? 
right? And now just take a little walk around the space. I move and I experience myself differently. I move and I experience myself differently. And we say walk through the space, walk around the space, walk with the space, right? Walk with it now. It's all around you now. It's on the back body. It's above you. It's in front of you. It's to the sides of you. Right? And now just come back when you want to. Back to sit in front of this camera again. This thing that's helping us, kind of like the space is, though sometimes we we might struggle with it, right? So here you are. Sit again. Feel your ass. That's so nice to feel your ass. The ass gets such a bad rap, right? But there it is, holding us up. Whew. Feel the top of your head. Ah, and maybe, maybe there's not even a top anymore. It's like, no, nope, it's kind of, hmm, they're kind of one. I don't know. Right? And feel the bottom of your feet. Feel the sides of you without having to look out to that side. Feel the kind of width of you. Right, now look to this camera. See it, and I'm gonna invite you to see it as a witness. Often when we're acting, we have to do a very vulnerable task and some, a somewhat private task in a very public arena. And I think that there's something like a witness out there. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but if we can allow ourselves to be seen in process, in process, I think we create for ourselves our own space, our own time. I often have to remind people, you have time. Take your time, right? But I think what we really have to do is we have to allow ourselves to be witnessed in process. So look to this camera for a moment and just see it as a witness to you. It's there to witness you. So there's something in you that desires to be seen. And if you gently come towards the camera, because that's your choice, it sees you. It witnesses you. And you can feel it. You can feel that you're closer now. You can feel that it's, you know, it's a, a little bit of a hot spot or something. It's something. Now, lean a little away from the camera. Let it still be witnessing you. In a way, it, it's the great God creativity and it wants to witness your every shift. And so, in a way, it's, gosh, it's almost like, um, it's a little flirtatious. <laughs> Turn to this side. Don't feel obligated by that flirtatious comment. <laughs> that might just be me. I mean, you know, what a saucy, saucy lady. But anyway, so turn to the side for a moment and just see that whatever thought you have here, maybe you do something so simple like you, you know, kind of collapse a little bit in on yourself. Just see that it wants to see that. that it wants to even witness the tiniest shift. Maybe you begin to move out from there. But it so wants to experience that, that it almost, it almost with gentle fingers is just beckoning you, right? And you can turn to the camera and give it a little bit of that opening, but you can also 
keep it to yourself and know that it will just want you more. And then turn back to the camera. Now find your way knowing that it wants, and it's not just, um, it's that it wants your creativity. It's a flirtation of artists. It wants, even if you lean forward and you had one thought in your head, maybe it's an image, maybe it's a feeling, and I said it, I said it, it's in your head. It's just a thought of a person, a situation. And it wants to see that and witness that and feel it so much that it's enough that you just have it. It's enough. And now turn your back to the camera. Ah, oh, and trust. <laughs> Let's say you go into that collapse again. Let it witness you, through you, and into you. It wants to experience that. And let's say it shifts the tiniest bit and you begin to go out a bit. Let it follow each step like a hungry, like a child learning what it's like to be a human being. And what say you stand up and move out a couple of steps out and keep this relationship to the witness? And turn back and keep this relationship. This thing that even if you don't look to it, if you walk over to one side, or another, it's still, it's got tentacles out, just gently pulling on your experience, just craving an education of you. Good, good. And like the Buddhists tell us, not too tight, not too loose. Now loosen up that concentration a bit. See how much can just be there because, uh, because it is there, because, because, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, and good. Now, come to some place uh, in the space. Yeah, I think you can see my feet. And uh, just stand where you are. I move, I experience myself differently. I'll go so far as to say I move, I experience the space differently, right? So here we are still in the middle of it, still in this fabulous contract with the space and with this camera, the great God creativity that loves loves the actor and lean forward on your toes lean forward don't fall over just lean forward on your toes and something wakes up just let it let it wake up it could be excitement right we're looking for a psychological value here it could be uh ambition it could be anxiety it could be anything right now come back to be on your toes proper like right smack on the middle of them 
Now lean back, don't fall over. Lean back. Lean to the right. Lean to the left. And now lean forward again, right on those tippy toes. And if I were to say that you would fill up with forward, if I were to say that your whole body and whole self begins at the self and life happens out in front of you, completely out in front of you, you have no sense of what came before, and you even wake up all those little fairies in the space that you've just woken up and that are game to play, and they are jiving with your front space. You are out in the front space and there is room to go. And then I'm gonna snap my fingers and out into the front space you're gonna go, go. Out in front of you, life happens out in front of you and you move, move, move in the space, out in front of you. Things are interesting and they're interesting out in front. If you get confused, you're confused in front of you. Get curious about the things out in front of you and notice what you notice. Notice what it wakes up in you. Notice what the front space wakes up in you. Ha! Huh. Notice where you look. Notice where there's an obstacle, but it doesn't feel like an obstacle. It just seems like a little easy challenge. Out in front of you, you go. Out, out, out. And let's give it a little name now. Let's say it's excitement. You are going forward. There's nothing holding you back. All of the body, top to toe, head to toe down to the fingertips, in the ass, out in front of you, you go. It's all game, all of you. And you're going out, 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 and it's excitement. There's something, something very exciting out there. Oh my gosh, and all you have to do is find it, and boy, you're already in a grab. You're gonna get it, get it by the throat. Yeah, and notice the things that you notice. Notice little things in the room maybe you didn't see for 10 years. Out you go. And that excitement, that excitement makes a tiny little shift into curiosity. See if there's a difference. Still very much in front of you, right? And it's curiosity. So it might have a different tempo, but it's got the same direction out. And the kneecaps are interested in what's in front of you and the shins and the toes. And maybe you even swing by this camera that you know wants to know what's going on and you're going out in front and have a little dialogue with it. What's that like to go in the direction the camera wants you to go anyway? Oh my gosh. Eh, I'm feeling petulant. I'm done with you, camera. You do your job, I'll do mine. So then, then that curiosity shifts a little bit and you've lost something in the room. So now that front space turns into trying to find out in front of you, where did I put it? It's out and so now that tempo might be a little more choppy, right? Out, out in front, where could that be? Huh, oh gosh. And now it gets a little bit more frantic because if you don't find it, there's trouble. It's important, this thing. So now that tempo that's choppy might get full on staccato. And that losing something turns into desperation. So now there's a desperate front space with a little bit of a choppy tempo that has starts and stops in spins, in changes of focus. Where could it be? Where could it be? And then something stops you altogether. 
and you're right, and, and it happened without you even knowing. You simply stopped going into the front space and just feel yourself. I move and I experience myself differently. You can feel that front space a little uh, awoken or something. Now come back to the camera and just feel that that front space is awoken. Maybe one of those sensations or something is still, qualities rather, is still kind of close by. And maybe you pick one. Let's be bold. Pick one. And just don't look at the camera, but be witnessed by it for a moment. And right even from your chair, either be looking for that object or be in excitement or be in curiosity. And just see if you can sense that this camera picks it up. I don't know why it's so moving to me, but I guess it's lovely that somebody would want to see me, to witness me. And if it isn't a camera, it can be a matchstick. There's something of the process that is witnessed. And then shift that quality, shift it to one of the other. Maybe it's that gentle curiosity. And what if that gentle curiosity now lived in one of these squares? I know some of you aren't in a square and it's fine. Some people are. And just, just look to one person, let one person tickle your fancy. And look into their square, never losing that that camera is still witnessing you wanting, wanting to see what's moving in you. And maybe they have a, a plant or books or a rug or something in their room and just see how much of you can kind of go into the front space and into their square. And, and that curiosity grows into a little bit of a, a reach because it's a little, a little bit of a distance, right? And then look to the person and see how that reach adjusts a bit and see, see if you could, you could reach out and just just touch their cheek, just in a kind of reassuring way that says, I'm, I'm in this too, I, I get it. Yeah. And then at some point, you just do it inwardly, just this kind of curiosity and reach to touch their cheek, just that oof, feels so good. Good. Good, and now move slightly away from this person that you just we're so intimate with and, and move away from them, that square. And, and, and there's implications in move away from, but try to avoid those for a moment. Just see what it's like to create distance. And that camera's watching you. It's curious. It's curious about this process.
and then come up. And now, same as before, right? Oh, it feels so good, those toes. Oh, just for a minute, let's just <laughs> go like this into the floor. Oh, oh, I have feet. I have feet. Oh, they're helping me right now. I have forsaken them for so many days. <laughs> oh. oh, gosh. Okay, so what's better than being an actor? I don't know, or a theater maker, or anyone who appreciates. Okay. Here we go. So just as before we lean forward, do it. See that all of that erupts and is there for you right away. Oh, right, that front space. How much more we have to discover about the front space, right? Now, lean to the right, something shifts. Something shifts. Lean back, don't fall. Lean to the left. Now lean back again. Don't fall, but see what immediately wakes up in you. What immediately wakes up in you. Oh. <laughs> Is it fear? Is it uh, uncertainty? Is it um, calm? What? It could be anything. Now come back to stand right on your feet, right in the middle of you. Now just halfway, split the difference now. Halfway, lean back and let it wake everything up in you. Let it, let it wake up that from your body backwards is where your interest, attention, everything goes. Go straight into the back space. Go straight into that back space. And it's the back of the thighs, the back of the knees, the heel, back. And come to stand right on yourself, but don't lose that back space that's woken up. Actually be going back a bit. It can be easy, but send your attention Pay attention, pay, invest your good attention back. And let it, let yourself discover what the hell that means. And what you can do is go on a little bit of a field trip around and with your space and just see what wakes up for you with this ever so simple suggestion of back. Ever so simple suggestion of back. Now we move forward in the world. That's how our architecture is built. So the imagination comes in a little bit here so that when you're ready, when you're ready, sometimes it's really helpful to walk back and really go with where your, you are inwardly anyway. At some point, the imagination comes in to help us and we're able to simultaneously move forward, but be going inwardly back. And a tempo might present itself to you. It might move you forward in a kind of slow way. Maybe the rhythm is steady. Maybe it's very clunky. But engage with the physical object. Sit down in a chair and stand up and be going back when you do it. Maybe turn a light on, turn a light off. But to the degree that you can, be going back as you do it. 
open the refrigerator, contemplate its contents. But if you contemplate, you contemplate it behind you. If you take in something of the world, it goes through you back. If you have a laugh, it happens back. If you have a cry, it happens back. And just for the sake of exploration, change your tempo now. Can you keep it up? Does it change something? What if you were looking for something, but now you're looking for it from this back place? What's the experience? How is it different? Can you look for something, but have really only a sense of how it affects you behind you. And what if that looking for something awoke a curiosity, but now this curiosity lives behind you. And what if that curiosity turned into excitement, but it was excitement that lives behind you now? Ah. And it might have a, a tempo. What if this tempo was a little staccato, this excitement that is back behind us now? It's a whole different implication. Huh. Maybe it becomes more about you or, <laughs> or And what if like a cloud coming in and blocking out the sun, it turns into fear? Now what lives behind you is fear. And it's an unknown. Now come back to the camera. Keep that with you. Keep that fear and unknown behind you. There's a real, there's a real question there that comes up because you don't quite know what it is. Good guys. So good. And then let this camera witness you in this back space of fear and unknown. And it's just enough. I heard Helen Mirren say this the other day. The actor's job is to just have the experience. The rest, you know, is up to somebody else. But it's just our job. And boy, doesn't that take a lot of trust. Whew. There's nothing that has to be expressed quite yet, right? Maybe ever. It's enough to have it. So let this camera witness you. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to look to yourself or look to the camera. It might be. But then this fear in the backspace begins to break up a little bit. Now go slowly through this transition. It begins to break up a little bit. And you don't quite know what it is yet. But then it settles on a kind of confidence, a kind of 
You're in your backspace, but this is a place of solidity, assured, assuredness, assurity. And so even if you come forward the tiniest bit, the back of you, you're sure in your back space. It's a settling almost. And then it breaks up a little bit again. And it begins to move through you and it turns into a coming forward and a desire. And now, before you even get to gesture, I want you to find somebody else in a square and all the direction is, is to come forward now. And now I want you to feel, depending on what it is you see in this chosen square, feel a gesture wanting to birth. So it's either you want, could want to shake that person, you could want to lift them, you could, but feel it on its precipice. Don't let it go into full expression quite yet. Just feel by coming forward and finding a, a desire to reach someone, to get in there and involve yourself in them and their smile that begins to creep up or their gorgeous hair or their curious look on their face. Feel the want to come forward and feel yourself ask the question, what would I want to do if I could? And it's just the, the potential for action, the potential for gesture. And it's not lived out yet, you know? And there's that camera again. You're not even looking at it, but it's witnessing you. It sees those little minutia moves that you make to change your strategy as this desire is birthed in you. And then without fulfilling that gesture, without fulfilling it, just begin to go back now, away from that same person and just be so curious. Do you ever hear Mark Ryland say, we should surprise ourselves and then be surprised we're surprised? <laughs> Why not? So just go back. And as you go back, something in them awaken something in you. There's a whole different palette of gestures that go back, right? And if you've been moving forward and back as I have, now just let this be an inner thing. Move back inwardly from them and see if there's a, a gesture that wants to be born. Is it that you want to pull them out and into? Or is it you want to push them away? Or is it you kind of want to penetrate them, but you've got to go back to do it and get the right footing? But it's just the potential for gesture. And it never gets satisfied. Okay, 
Okay, that's a lot of concentration. Ah! Now just, ah! Ah! all right? Okay, <laughs> but good. Hey, I think now would be the time. I would love, um, I'm gonna share with you this little open dialogue. And I loved what Maria Rico was doing last week where she went into the different uh, breakout rooms. I would love you to just try simply going forward and back with this little dialogue that you're gonna see. We're gonna give you a second. Maybe you even have to water in, water out. You know, you have to pee or drink or something. And then you're just gonna familiarize yourself with this little dialogue. It won't take long. And if you're like me and memory is um, one of your, one of, uh, uh, a beautiful thing you you can look at the text it doesn't it doesn't really matter but but when you do engage you're gonna work um i don't know the rooms are two or three people or something like that and um, and some of you are on the phone this is a fabulous challenge this is a fabulous challenge for the phone because again it's just that you're in the movement it's enough and something of that phone has to witness you something of the gods witness us when we're in transformation. So you're just gonna go forward or back. And maybe you just choose one at first. Maybe you pick a moment that it shifts and you try out going towards this person and then something of what they do sends you back. As simple as that. So here is the, how should we do this, Marie? I'm gonna share this screen. Yeah, great. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna... Yeah? Stephanie, before you <coughs> everybody go on a break, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say Yeah. <coughs> oh, perfect. So let me stop sharing. Yeah. <laughs> say <it> now? <laughs> Yeah, sure. So should we take a break? And I'll, I'll share my screen when we take a break so that people can kind of take a peek at that little thing. And then maybe when we come back, Mario, we will go in. Great. Little yeah, wonderful. I wanted to remind everybody because I didn't say it in the beginning. I was so excited to have Bethany start uh, that we are recording the sessions. It's a free class which means uh, the whole initiative is that it's a global class. So it will be posted on YouTube. So I wanted to remind everybody that if you do not want to have be in the recording, you're going to switch off your video because this will be put so that everybody can benefit from Bethany's and Don's class today. So just as you know that this will be recorded and when you're doing your exercises, it will be recorded as well. So if you don't want to be seen, you're going to hide your video. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, I'll share the screen now, and then we'll take a break. Thank you, Bethany. Do you need anything from me while on a break? Uh, no, no, I can only hear you, but I don't. <laughs> Except what a, what a fantastic class. I'm loving it. So thank you so much. Okay. Oh, you know, if you need anything, and you have the hosting opportunities as well. So yeah. the whole web. Oh, the hosting opportunity. That's yeah. right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cool. stop the recording for the time of the break and then I'm going to restart. Okay. okay. <laughs> And then, and you're just going to have a moment to share this with each other and just see, I know we woke up a little bit of tempo and a little bit of quality and stuff like this, and you can bring as much of that in as you want. But I also find, um, you know, when I'm coaching, I, a lot of times I'll play with just front space and back space, that it is so simple and so accessible 
that, um, that it's a really lovely place to start. And then if you feel that something gets birthed, feel that something desires to, to go into action, you know, you, you, you're master of your domain, you can do what you want, but sometimes it's enough for it to just feel. Sometimes the potential for gesture is, um, is enough to wake something up in you. So anyhow, um, then when we're done with these uh, rooms, then we'll go to Don Arnold. Um, uh, yeah, so. Fantastic. I wanna quickly, because this might be new for many of us, uh, that people know, I'm going to uh, send you in different rooms. You have to accept the invitation in order to get to the room. I think there's a little thing you need to click. Uh, otherwise you'll hang out here alone. <laughs> I will be here sort of like <laughs> making sure, but you've got to click um, the invitation. Is, is, isn't that so? For those who know. Yeah. Will we see it on our screen? How, where does the invitation come to? It should show up. I haven't made it yet. But um, so also I wanted to know, Bethany, how many people would you like to have in one room? Three or two? Uh, uh, you know, it could be, could, we could do two and then those people could go back and forth with each other if that's possible. Right. So I'm going to, let's yeah. see. We have 44 partic 43 participants, 42. <laughs> okay. And there's uh, some people on the phone, is that right, Marika? What's that? There's some people on the phone? I think so, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So let me see, it's offering us the possibility to, if I say, do 15 rooms, we will have yeah. three people in a one room. How would, does that sound okay? Yeah, these are nice people. They're gonna share between oh, them. 15 people, it's still gonna, I guess it's going to depend on, okay, I'm gonna send everybody now and I, I'll try to make sure everybody gets in. Anything else you wanna say, Bethany? Yeah, just so long as it's clear, it's pretty, pretty simple, right? everybody good with just forward and back okay great okay have fun oh i do want to say something oh can i still which is just this it seems in the script that there's an implication you know it seems already that there's like an attitude from a to b right challenge yourself with that because it might read that way but if you're going try to stick with the direction, you know? If you're going forward and, you know, maybe it looks like it's a snarky comment here. I don't know, surprise yourself. It could be, it could be something else entirely. So just stick with the direction, okay. okay. Let's see how this, oh, it's, okay. And Mari Rika, it's asking me to join a breakout room. Oh, oh, that's funny. Uh, I don't, um, but you're a host, so now I don't know. I could do it also, it's fine. As a, as a co-host, you should be able to travel between the rooms though, I think. I just don't want to leave somebody empty if, they're, if they need you know a partner. What the system made so that most rooms have three people now. I don't know how, oh, why. Fine. I don't mind if two. Some of them are two and some of them are three. So oh yeah. Let me see. Let me see which room you were. What is the number of your room that you got invited? Eight. Eight. Eight, Eight yeah. has three people, so you don't have to. Okay, great. You can most likely hop around. Yeah. <laughs> it's like how intimate it can be. So oh. so atmospheric and ah, oh. you know, it, it, I I don't consider myself somebody who, you know, needs. I don't know. I, I, I can occupy myself, you know, I really can. I love being in community, but I, I, um, but because of this, I have felt the desire to hug more than I have ever felt it in my life and the desire to have a shared, a shared space. I, I, I've, I've been surprised by that, you know, um, and, and maybe it's not surprising to many people, but I have felt it on a cellular level, just a want to enter into and to welcome into. Whew. For sure. So. I think we share that so much. I'm so grateful for my dogs and my cats. And I'm like, oh. Oh. what I would give for a dog, Maria Rika. <laughs> okay. yeah. 
Um, some people have not joined rooms, but I think maybe they just didn't want to. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. I'm going to get my little cheat sheet. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be A. How about that? Yes. Let's do that. Okay. So with the leaning out and back. Yeah. Thoughts. Yeah. And it can be the tiniest, subtlest little thing. And it's best if it's just that that inner place in you that moves. So, right. yeah. hey, how you doing over there? I'm managing. <laughs> how, how about you? Actually, actually I'm kind of great. Well, <laughs> that makes one of us. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna try it one more time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could do the same, or we could. Why don't we do different? Why don't we play the other role? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Hey, over there. How are you managing? Well, I'm uh, doing okay. How about you? Well, actually, I'm kind of great. Oh. oh, that makes one of us. Oh. Hmm. But it's okay, you know? <laughs> you go back and forth, too. It happens so quickly. <laughs> nice. It's so simple, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just the simplest thing. actually frightening how simple it is. Yes. There's not a million thoughts going like, I should be doing this and this and this, you know. <laughs> Emma, that's a great, it's a great um, point you make because I think why I like working with these, you know, broad strokes, direction is just a broad stroke and it's the beginning of everything. Yeah. It's the beginning of gesture. It's the beginning of, you know, that um, you don't, it doesn't take up a lot of real estate in the head. Mm. You don't have to think about it too much. Yeah. You know, you can just, do it and you're very free to be very present to anything else that might come up, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing it with me. <laughs> of course, how fun. <laughs> it was lovely, like this wave of life, like everything is in movement and in, in this like contracting, expanding or the, the, it's, just, it's very lovely. <laughs> it is, it's, it's life. Life comes to meet movement, it does. And it comes to meet direction in such a way. It's really, it's always, kind of impressive hey guys i invited everybody back they have like 31 seconds to get here okay. they, will, they will eight seconds seven <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll shut down on them yeah and they'll retreat Ugh, it's very dramatic stuff it was beautiful thank you yeah um I should wait for everybody to come back. I want you to know how difficult this is to see all these faces and not want to either, um, you know, just grab them all and hear everything and hear what you had for breakfast and what movie you're watching. No. Anyway. I think everybody's pretty much back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Let's do it. So um, I was just saying that, uh, you know, well, no, this is what I'm going to say is that I'd love to hear just a few uh, experiences should you want to share them. Um, but we will probably uh, hold the bulk of our conversation till after we work. And Dawn, you know, we'll have some time at the end of that. Um, so we'll maybe just have a few little sharings and then you'll certainly have a chance to, you know, talk more about that um, in anything at the end uh, of the day. So if anybody wanted to share something, uh, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, it feels like uh, when we're doing like the other person was like going forward, another one is going back. It, it felt like this kind of a, like cold atmosphere or something like that. Like this, the other one was like, you know, very like, oh. we, 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 even he wasn't, she wasn't moving, but I just feel like she was like trying to. Oh. Away, being being like very distant. 
it's epic like love stories in this little forward and back you know it's rejection and deep infatuation <laughs> just forward and back yeah. <laughs> yeah it's oh you feel it on such a deep level when somebody goes away from you yeah yeah it's so simple but still you could feel like she, he, he, she was not present you know he was like yeah. i'm not here something like that yeah Absolutely, these whole experiences absolutely happen on that level. One thing I was saying to Emma, I, I was saying one reason why I like working with this is that it doesn't take up a lot of real estate in the brain. You know, you really can be very present and you can imagine if you begin to layer in some of the more complicated elements of the technique or, you know, flowery or something, it can hold it, but there's something about this um, that you you can still stay so present to the space your partner you know anything that wakes up so that it could be a a, a myriad of things you know but you're somehow still in this movement still in this commitment still in this attention and um uh it, it it's you, yeah you, you it doesn't take up a lot of space in the brain okay wonderful does albina is raised her hand i wonder what that is about Maybe it was an accident. Albina, are you there? Oh, so, yes, I am. <laughs> you see me now? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was wondering, uh, we had a very strong experience, actually. And um, uh, it seems like this timing for this exercise is too short to put dialogue there. Uh, because the experience is so strong that um, like thinking about dialogue is already implementing some thinking process mm. and it was a little bit uh, like I felt pity to break the experience in this mm. timing so I I'm not sure is um if it's possible in this short time, maybe for trained people, but who people who had some break for sure in this uh, method of working, then it was just a no that the experience is beautiful. That I don't want any one of the dialogue, you know. So. You know, I, I completely understand. I completely understand that. I think sometimes I think and and this is going to go against most um of the uh atmosphere of checkoff work but sometimes i think if you fake it till you make it there's this kind of backfill thing that can happen like if you press override and just it turns out that you discover something that you didn't know was possible or you br you break that part of you that goes this is not in conjunction you know, this beautiful thing is here and this dialogue is here. And, and sometimes if you, if you just come at it, uh, you know, again, and just over, override it, um, then some, something yet a third thing is possible. And, mm -hmm. and we had no idea and it might feel different for you, but then it might really feel something great for, uh, mm -hmm this something else but not to discount your experience but sometimes i really you know if i was in there working with you i'd go do it again just just muscle it through and step right in shit just step right in it and then find yourself yes yeah right yeah and that way we we, we like we just continue to open up a new uh realm of possibility Mm -hmm. But I am glad it was strong. This is a nice thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, I would like to share. Um, I'm sorry you can't see me. It's because of my camera. Um, but can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It was very interesting for me to explore uh, the inner movement from different parts of my face. So that like moving forward through my, the center of my forehead, just between the eyes was a very different experience than moving 
forward from my lips, for example. So it was very, very interesting just to explore the whole place area. Interesting. You know, Joanna, I was talking to Joanna the other day, and she says that sometimes when she's working with people on camera, um, you know, when she's coaching, that she'll put a gesture somewhere very specific, like in the shoulder or something, something very, because it has to really, it has a smaller um, expression. Now, of course, this is not a camera class. I talked about the camera, but as a witness, not, not necessarily as a camera, but I do find when, um, when what's being expressed is a kind of finer thing, you know, to find one location like you experienced in, in the body somewhere to hold that, that image or what you're working with is really powerful. It's amazing how much, um, if you're really sensitive and you can hear it and listen to it, you know, how much it shifts. That's awesome. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So shall we, shall we move on? To Dawn? Yes. Let's we move to Dawn. Break. We did enough break already, so yeah. we are good. We're good to go for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. It was fun. And thank you. Oh, Bethany, that was awesome. But just awesome. Waking up all those places around us. Oh and and with curiosity to this witness that is in our space um how do you feel about being a kind of creative for a little bit do you want to be a creative artist today and um we'll use some of the checkoff tools and uh, three of them actually we're going to use the centers which we just listened to a bit and we also are going to use some gestures and we're going to use some qualities and we're going to uh, create something and so a lot of this work now is not for the lens even if you like to keep it as a curious witness um but you're going to be in your what i call always in the studio solo concentration that you are busy with what you're listening to in yourself and doing the work to do the work as the work of an artist you know because you are like a painter or you're like a sculptor or or a carpenter or somebody making something wonderful and you don't care about the audience right now because you're busy creating and uh, maybe you'll never care about the audience for this piece, but um, but you make something beautiful today that you are proud of. And I'm going to give you some prompts to get you started. But I want to help you understand that no matter what prompt I give you, you have permission to make it different. You can make it a different way. All right. But I will lead you, I, could, I think I'll give you about four things to get you started. And with any of those four things, you could do something else. So don't worry about if you don't like my choices for you. I'm just going to get you going, okay? So we're going to get up, we're going to be uh, in our full body. We can do that away from the lens with solo concentration. Those of you who um, are not on video, you only have to listen to me leading you and do the work wherever you are. And those of you who are on video, you can be seen or not seen, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, at the end, we will come back to this uh, witness and the Hollywood squares. And, um, but that's only at the very end. But right now, uh, we're going to all be in our creative space. And so um, a, a different kind of crossing the threshold maybe is in order now as we transition into this work. And that is we have to make the space around us now room for this creativity. And this is really just a decision on our part. You have been experiencing your space very nicely this afternoon already. 
you have you, you have made friends with the objects in your space but now i would like you to sort of uh, use a check off word baptize the space into a place of of great creativity and so to do that you're going to maybe um clear away something i don't know what that is maybe it's judgment maybe it's um worrying about getting it right maybe it's uh, just feeling a, some kind of clutter that is mental or physical and you're going to just take a little time to clear that away from yourself and to allow the space that you're going to work in to be like a nice fresh blank canvas it has nothing written on it yet it's open for you to be creative in and just do that for a moment clear away anything that's not going to help you in your creative work and be ready to take a step and what i'd like you to do is literally open a door not not the door of your apartment but in imagination open a door and then step in and allow that to be around you this creativity all surrounding you so there's no uh, pressure on you because all the creativity is around you and it's ready to feed you and then become aware that there is all this life around you and moving through you and it might be like a river and to reconnect with these spaces that Bethany already got you aware of let's just find some of these currents of your river of life flowing through you and maybe we are just for instance coming from behind you and moving through you into in front of you that's one possible current you might play with and maybe you find a current going from the right side moving through you to the left side or maybe back to the other way from the left side moving through you to the right side and just get into these beautiful currents and again it's not like you have a responsibility that you have to make this happen you're just discovering this life that's moving through you and you're just getting into it, riding on these currents. And then maybe also you find that there's a current coming from above and flowing down from your head, through you, through the hips and legs and feet to the ground and then maybe you could come back up through the feet and legs and pelvis and backbone and neck and head up so you have this wonderful current moving in this up and down place and you just ride this current
So you can change from any of these directions flowing. Of course, you go from one side to the other, and it passes through you. So whether it's the up to the down, or the down to the up, or it's the right to the left, or the left to the right. Or the back to the front, and the front to the back. You just can find these currents and play them. And in this way, you are getting your body in a place of wisdom. You hear this movement in you. And listen carefully to what is happening in you as you move in this way. Listen to your body. And as you're listening, listen a little more to what is happening very close to the bone. So while you encourage this lovely river, now listen to what's happening very close inside. And maybe your outer movements are a little more close, not as far as they went before. And then you can sort of be in a place of anticipation that you don't know what you will create. But I'm going to direct your attention to the area around your hips and legs, which we know of as the will area, the place where we experience the will. And perhaps you can feel some power running through your will into your legs and feet. And we'll start to see if we could form a gesture that's like taking your stand. I'm going to take my stand. And this is an active thing. You know, I don't get there and just stay there. I feel like I have to keep taking my stand. And at first, in the way of psychological gesture, this might be a bit larger. As we discover what this gesture is, I'm taking my stand. I'm noticing it in my will area. And I would like to do this with a feeling of power, a quality that is like powerfully. I am taking my stand in my will powerfully. And keep playing with this until you really think you can feel it and hear it in you.
And this is your first statement. I'm making a statement. I'm taking my stand powerfully, focused on my will. Now do something that is not this gesture. So walk away from this gesture and do something else. Do something with your shoulders instead of your hips. But we're dropping for a moment this thing we were looking at. And we'll come back to it. So when we come back to it, we'd like to take it like a new thing, a new idea. But it's going to be this idea of taking a stand, well focused in the will, with a power gesture, power quality, I'm sorry. So you want to come into it again now on your own. You will find this statement again in your body. I'm taking my stand, which seems to be so focused in the will. And it's powerful. Good, good. Let's let it go again and move away from it, walk away from it. That was a nice exploration. I have a little creative idea there. Now I'll give you another prompt. So we'll, we'll go to a different center. We're gonna come up to the feeling area around the heart. And we're going to start to listen for a gesture that is like uh, drawing somebody to you. You want to draw someone to you. You're very focused in the feeling center, not the will that we were before, but the feeling. And the gesture is to draw towards you. And the quality of this gesture, something Soft, I would suggest maybe nurturing, a nurturing gesture is drawing towards you in a nurturingly way. And explore this gesture until you really start to hear it in your body. You hear the movement of it. It's becoming known to you. Now just let it go for a moment, step away from it, so that you feel that you're not doing it. This is always helpful, the difference between doing it and not doing it. <laughs> you need that wisdom. Then come back to it, come back to this same gesture. 
focus on the feeling center, drawing towards you in this nurturingly quality. Listen for it in your body. Listen to the movement, how it flows through you. Lovely. So that is another statement. If we are creating something, that is one thing we might use. Again, if you want to adapt any of these prompts with a different a gesture or a different quality, you can. I'm just suggesting some things to get the ball rolling here a little bit. Okay. Let's come up into the thinking center, the place around your head. And here too, we have movement. We have movement of thought and thought moving in a certain way, a certain quality. And the idea that I will suggest to you just to get it going is that you are thinking uh, with a, a, a penetration that you can see very clearly, but it is, it is sparkling. There's a quality of, of sparkling that is shooting out of you these, these beautiful, quick, penetrating ideas. And they are moving in your head, through your head, into the air around your head. Oh, you have these beautiful, penetrating thoughts. They are like little sparks. And they're flying out. And at first, you can have your whole body help you get this gesture. Whatever you need to do to really grasp this gesture, this penetrating, flying out thoughts, Barking thoughts. Good, now set that aside for just a moment. And maybe go back for a moment to the feeling center with the drawing, nurturing the. That's a very different thing. Feeling center, drawing, nurturing the. The quality of it is so different. It should, it should be a little shocking even to your system, to do that after the sparky thoughts. Then go back to the sparky thoughts. Lovely. Now take a little break. We have done three beautiful gestures. There's more that we could do, but just take a little moment. And, oh, I did three things, and they were distinctive things. They involved a different center in me. 
they involved a different gesture and a different quality. They were each a unique statement. Possibly this could be something I could create with. Now let's try one more. Go to the feeling area and just find the gesture of to open and the quality is with awe. To open with awe. It has its own rhythm, it has its own sort of music to it. And you can hear the movement in you, moving through you. then stop doing that and just take a step away from it, be in the body in a kind of between state. I am between this one idea and this other idea and maybe I'm taking a little pause. I am a very busy artist here and I have to pause and contemplate my masterpiece for a second. All right, now we did four things. And this was just to get you started, that you are looking at gestures that are highly focused in one of the centers and they have a certain quality. Now, what would happen if we would start to take these gestures and the way Chekhov did this, and you know, if you're reading his book, he um, he did this kind of exploration so readily and so easily that he would start with one little creative idea, and then he would start to riff on that and go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And I don't know if you have ever tried to do this alone in your creative space, which we are in right now today, and we are all, all sharing our creative spaces here. It, you can get lost in this marvelous exploration, and it is such satisfying artistic work that you will feel full and you will feel so accomplished when you are done, and I warn you, you can lose a lot of time with this because once you get started, you're not going to want to stop. You're going to want to just keep going and going and going and going. And all of a sudden you'll look at your clock and you'll say, oh my gosh, two hours have gone by. Um, so it's great fun, but all you need really is one thing to get it started. So we have now four things to get it started and you can choose other things on your own. But here is a, a way to give it a little uh, composition. We have to start with something that we say is the beginning. And then Chekhov says a curious thing. He says, you have to then say, what is the ending? Now that is quite hard. You say, wait a minute. I haven't even started this story. How do I know what the ending is? But he says, you can just set yourself up with this bookend. There's the beginning and there's the ending. 
And once you have set up this bookend, you can find out what goes from there to there. Okay? So, um, you can randomly choose one of the gestures I gave you as a prompt, or you can make up your own. But I would like you to get up and make the gesture. Don't forget it has to be really focused in a certain center. And it has a quality. And make this first statement. This is the beginning of your creative piece. Okay, everyone get up and find your first statement. All right, do you think you have a good idea? Yeah? It's, it's a little tricky for me because I, I don't see too many videos because you're in your solo concentration space. So some of your videos are off, so I can't actually tell whether you're done or not. But I'm going to think that maybe you have had enough time to find that first one. So now you know where we have to go. We have to jump to the end. So. This is a little bit creative randomness. You have to trust your artistry to just jump there. So find a gesture well focused in the center with a certain quality that you think will be the end of your piece. So just jump in and go to this ending statement. It can sometimes happen that right in the middle of a gesture, you will kind of decide to go to another gesture. That's okay. It is evolving. And you may start with a certain quality and then just all of a sudden decide to go to a different quality and that's okay too. You are a creative artist. Something beautiful is coming from you. You can't get anything wrong. 
It is just coming. And when you have finished making this statement, which we say is the end of your piece, let yourself be full of it. And let it just sustain, ripple, echo out. And then finally take a little rest from your creative effort. Appreciate that you just did that. Very satisfying artistic labor where we get all of our reward in the doing. It's all in the doing. Sometimes we mistake ourselves and we think that the reward is in somebody watching or the reward is that we're playing off of somebody else, but actually the reward is in the doing. When you feel so full that you have done this beautiful thing. All right, now let us see if you remember your beginning. <laughs> So we will take these two gestures and they will go one after the other, the beginning and then the end. So try these two, one and then the other. Good, 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 good. And let's pause for a moment again. Good work, good. You could do the beginning and the end. And now you might reflect a little bit that something is starting to develop, that you be realizing that we started with something that was just, well, we call it elemental, right? We started with something that was just movement, focusing on a center, feeling the quality of it, and we didn't have a reason. But now it is going to start to have meaning is starting to take on a life. 
you're beginning to know what it is in a way. And I would recommend that you don't force this at all, that you just let it unfold. You let it come to you. You don't question it hard and say, what is that? What is that? You say, what is that? What could it be? What am I saying here? And maybe who am I saying this thing? And these things will come. You know, Chekhov talked about his tools, that they were like light bulbs that you flick one on and something else happens. So just in the doing of these gestures, you are turning on your creative light bulbs and other things that you know you want to find as actors start to come. And you don't have to force what that is at all. This is the pleasure of it, if you will give it its time. So now we have this thing in front of us. It's a curious beginning of our masterpiece. And we say, all right, I have a beginning and I have an end. What is going to be in the middle? And it could be just one thing. You don't have to do um, a whole symphony today. You could do one little section, which would have maybe just one gesture in the middle. So there's the beginning, there's a middle gesture, and there's a last gesture. And that might be enough for this afternoon. Or it could happen that you feel that to get from the beginning to the end, you need a couple of gestures to get there. So this is all up to you in your artistic labors. And I'm now going to set you going on this. And I will sometimes maybe say a few things just to keep you going. But you're in your solo concentration, your creative work, and you're beginning an exploration, improvisationally, that will take you from your first statement through something to the last statement. And this will be your piece. So, everybody get ready and dive into your creative exploration.
It has a life of its own. It's telling you what it wants to be. Good. If you think you have discovered your middle, you might want to start again from the beginning and see if you can get through to the end. I am hurrying you just a little bit. I know you would like to spend more time with your creative work. So if it is possible, if you want to still uh, make a transition now from your solo working, gradually meeting up with this lens that Bethany showed you this witness and perhaps you would like to turn your video on again and just be relating to this witness and make a transition from just listening to your own interesting creative work 
and to the possibility that you would deliver it to someone else. And you think, oh, maybe I'm not done, but it's okay, because we can do work in progress, yeah? We all do work in progress showings all the time. It's how the art evolves. Okay. So with this awareness that you are being witnessed, can you do this piece? And don't worry about you all doing it together. Well, that's okay. To start at your beginning, to go through the middle, whatever it is, it might still be evolving even now, and then to come to the end with a feeling that you have completed. That's what Chekhov calls maybe the feeling of the whole, right? We come to the wholeness of it. And this, by the way, is one way that we can explore what this feeling of the whole means, that we try to give shape to something, and at some point it will feel right to us, it will feel like it is complete. And that's a good feeling. All right, so allowing your witness to see you do this from your beginning to the end. Good, good, good. Was that a bit different to go from, I am totally in my own creative space, thinking only about what I am creating, to this awareness of being seen doing it. So then something happens differently, which is this radiating that we want to let that be coming out of us into this medium of communication. Well, now, what would happen if that beautiful thing you created could become a little condensed? And some of you that I could see with your videos on while you were working were enjoying these beautiful, large, Chekhovian psychological gestures. Well, what would happen if the thing you are waking up and feeling as you do these is becoming more and more known to you so that you can gradually make less the outside and feel more the inside of it? That we take this in little steps, yeah? That you don't have to go from big to little all at once, 
but you can start it, right? You can start with your big gesture, and then what would happen if it were still very full on the inside, but a little less on the outside? And this is a kind of condensing, yeah? Um, when you take the, the water out of fruit juice, it becomes thicker. So, so we're taking the water out, yeah? We're taking out what is maybe a little bit extraneous. And this, to me, is what is so beautiful about being forced into this medium with all of this, because I feel sometimes that we become entranced with the large gestures and we play with them so happily and so fully but we don't realize that we're so in love with them that we're not listening to what they are there to cause they are there to wake something up inside and we're not hearing it but when we have to condense it when we have to you know go from here to something that is more internal then we start to really learn it you know that Chekhov talks about he says all these exercises give the body wisdom right so when we are working and listening really listening and we are finally gradually allowing that we don't need so much on the outside but we lose nothing on the inside, then we are getting to the place Chekhov meant for us to go when we do these psychological gestures. And we have to come to this place to play for this particular kind of witness. Yeah? So the inside, the very active and alive inside is what we're going to need to play to the lens. <clears throat> So go ahead and, and start with the larger gestures that you were doing, but start to condense it. And you can sit if you want. It will be a transition for sure from what you were just doing because you still have to find your will. You have to find your legs and feet. You have to find the movement in the space around you still but we're going from the larger gesture into the condensed gesture. Take your time, one little step at a time, and go through your piece, beginning, middle, end, and see how it is becoming adapted. Listen carefully to inside.
let it become quite strong inside now. And you can still feel the progression of what you're doing. Good, good. Let's take a little pause for a moment. And if you were not sitting, go ahead and sit. And maybe you have to tip your camera a little bit so we can see your face and your upper body. And now, um, I want you to look at the actual faces you can see, and I'm grateful to those of you who have turned on your videos. So we have some faces here, and I would like you to focus on a face that you want to give your peace to. We'll be doing this all at once, so nobody has to feel that they are really being exposed, because probably only a few people will look at you <laughs> and you're only looking to one person um, but it's just the idea of sending this thing that you discovered this creative life that you just found to someone and again you will not have the satisfaction of them returning anything to you but again i want to say that your satisfaction is in the doing that you understand what you are giving and you hear it fully inside of you. It takes so much concentration to hear what you are doing. So let's go ahead and use this opportunity to work with that concentration and get yourself ready. Focus on the face you want to give your peace to. And in this concentrated form that you have made it in. Give that to them from beginning, middle and end.
very beautiful, very, very beautiful. I saw such lovely things. All right, I think we'll take a little moment for you to fly back over what that was for you. And I don't want to open up a huge conversation, but maybe just a moment if you want to unmute yourself and say something about what just happened to you in this situation, just this thing that you just did. Hey, so I had an interesting just little shift where I wanted to make the gesture happen. And then I just decided, okay, I'm going to receive the other person and let the gesture come out. And that was just a little thing, but it definitely helped the gesture come out a little more naturally and just kind of trust, hey, my experience right now is enough, no matter how little or big it is. That was cool. Great, great. I was waiting, even though it wasn't conscious, for a reaction from the person I was looking at. And of course, that wasn't going to happen. But then it seemed to happen. And it kind of fueled my gestures. It made them feel more real. That was fun. Beautiful. We have a couple of hands up. How do you want to do it, Don? Do you want people to just unmute and ask? Because some people have actually raised their hand like politely. Which way do you want to do it? <laughs> well, I like the polite. This is nice. So, so Joanna has has hit, and Gary at least. That's what I'm yes. seeing. Are you seeing? Yes. Uh huh. Do you, do you do that or me? Okay. Um, Carrie, you had your hand up. Why don't you tell us what you were saying? Yes. Um, even you had made a comment about even though you know we send it out um, and not to get anything back. It just reminded me of just rehearsing alone. But also, uh, I picked Kathleen. Um, and um, it, it, it was just weird because uh, it seemed like we had this connection. I don't know if she chose me, but her gestures and my gestures seemed to link up. Mm -hmm. So I got, I received what she was giving and my gesture at the same time was this. At one time she turned her head like this. My next gesture was this. She looked down. And I, my next gesture is that. And I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> but just from that, it was, I'm like, it, it got something going inside. Uh, but it was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. I, that's all I Yeah, but thanks, Kathleen. Just, uh, just there, there was some connection, even though I know this, we're all here, but. It just seems like if you radiate that energy towards something, it, it seems like you'll get something back. Yes, good, good, good. Thank you. Yeah, I felt very, this is Barry. I felt very, very connected. It was extremely intimate. Um, uh, the, the longer we went on, um, or you know, uh, that I was projecting, onto this person or uh, showing myself, revealing myself. And it was almost like I felt like I was in the room with that person, my, my energetic body or whatnot, you know? And I just felt s extremely connected and alive. And even though we we're at a distance, um, yeah, I felt like I was in the room with that person. It was that intimate and deep and powerful of an energy. Yeah, that's it. Great. I think Joanna has her hand up. So go, Joanna. 
Uh, my question was kind of like before we started the exercise, I just was wondering like how to manage being like be, doing the doing and being done to at the same time. Cause I feel like I just as like a person have a really strong will center. And like, I was like, well, I'm gonna do mine. You know, <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna like, I gotta show it. Um, but like, then I was wondering like, I'm like, how do you, how do you do your part and allow, like, especially if you're not really paired with the person, like, how do you read? Yeah, it was just, I was kind of like, anticipating being nervous about that but then I did the activity and it was it was it kind of made all my gestures more immediate because I wasn't sure if that person was like hearing me so it was just like a preemptive question it's a great question and it's probably one of the most interesting questions for people who are advancing in the checkoff work is this blending of your focus on what you're radiating and what you're receiving is it's a beautiful thing to study um and and let's think about it as a kind of high bar too because um you have to balance it it has to be both you can't give up what you are giving from your creative work in favor of only receiving, you have to have this balance between the giving and the receiving. And that that is, yeah, it's one of the biggest challenges. I know in my studio, my more advanced students, they, they want to work on this all the time because this is the thing that is, uh, it's, it's the interesting equation in the Chekhov work. Yeah, my partner, it was kind of like difficult to see their full face. So it was like, it kind of helped ease my problems at all. Cause I was like, oh, like if this is a character I've been a scene with, like maybe I can't see them. So it, I like, I used it, but it, it was definitely something that I wanted like certainty of that I was like meeting him. Or yes, yes. That will be the development of it. Good. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wanted to say something about what this was that we just did? Okay. Well, what? Nope, something. I just heard something. Oh, Gasol, go ahead. Hey, Don. Uh, what was it? It was a very interesting experience. I didn't do any teaching uh, through the web or any check of work through the web. It's my first time. Uh, uh, of course, I have my reservations and um, I found things, I found a lot of things, especially in the small, very small things and details. But I, in this last one, Yes, um, I felt, uh, maybe it's because I'm not used to, but I felt a very insecure place uh, where to, like, you, you need the other in a way. You, is, uh, you work on something of the technique, the beginning, middle and end, and how suddenly something that has no meaning becomes for you full or, interesting potentially uh and i was really looking at this person and and you know and, and but something is not i i miss the other side you, you need that that i don't know how but i miss like i could get lost alone yes uh, and yeah. i didn't have uh the anchor like a ship so something i felt something strange there but maybe it's because it's my first time i don't know uh, that but also because it, it's a challenge also i didn't even think about it till you said it just now so which was that you had all created these things that had great meaning to you but as soon as you go to give it to this other person uh, you are revealing something 
and you don't know what is going to happen to it. And uh, there is, yes, an insecurity of what they're going to do with it, um, even though you didn't have to worry about the response in this instance. Um, but that, yes, that is another piece of the puzzle. Um, but I think what I wanted only for you to get is that what you had found would then be directed beyond you. So we would need another kind of situation and setup mm -hmm. for this to, to take its full journey if that was where we were going to go with this creative work. But um, I also just thought for this um, online question um, that at a certain point, what you so beautifully did on your own has a moment to enter the, the online universe. Yeah. Um, and I am finding this myself and I'm not doing as much teaching as some people, although this is progressing <laughs> gradually. Um, but I'm finding that um, just the idea that someone could take it is, is a lot, right? You don't have to worry about what they're going to give back yet, but just that someone will take it. And that shifts it from completely solo concentration into another realm. Yeah. Yeah. I get yeah. So I am uh, very curious with all of your responses to this because um, we are inventing a new kind of animal here. You know, we're trying to to have the Chekhov work come into this kind of communication. It's not just about playing on camera. It's a communication. This this zooming and <laughs> and Hollywood squares communication is uh, is a different thing. And we're all learning how to navigate and and we're literally coming up with something different, right? Um, so I thank you all for participating in this <laughs> experiment as we uh, explored this to see what would happen. And I'm still curious, if you have other things to say about what that felt like, I'm, I'm happy to hear them either through chat or email or whatever. I should give you my email, just um, uh, just um, so that I could hear more what you are finding out as you're doing this, because um, I'm trying to figure it out myself. And Don, I'm going to make sure that when your video is um, up on YouTube, there's going to be your website address and same for Bethany. Uh, so oh, great. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. So now, um, if everybody has is satisfied that they said something that they needed to say about this, we could open up the conversation to how the whole afternoon went for you and any questions that came up that are burning questions for either Bethany or myself or Mario Rica. Everybody can help us answer these things. Yeah. Jonna, your hand is still up. Is it from the last question or is it uh, a new question? Okay, I'll lower it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> While you're thinking, I just want to applaud everyone for their wonderful concentration, because I do appreciate that this format is it taxes concentration greater than uh, in a just a regular studio room. So you did such beautiful work today to be so focused. And uh, while nobody's asking questions, I just would like to honor and thank Bethany and Dawn for this beautiful, beautiful class. Thank you so much for taking this time to come and do this. So everybody's clapping their hands together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm so grateful. This is exactly what I was hoping that would happen when I started the initiative. I was like, I'll just start doing and then hope somebody will join me. <laughs>
Uh, this was, I, I'll pipe in and say thank you too for the attention because this is some kind of attention. I mean, this is so, it's a different kind of attention than being in a studio. You know, there's some, there's also that thing that doesn't come back that some of you just said, and that's, that's energy, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's awesome. It's awesome that we're all trying to find a way around it. I know, I know in my heart that there's something in there of the Chekhov work that can get stronger. That then when we get back into a studio, we're going to be friggin' rock stars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so this is just an incredible thing that you've that you've done, Marjorie, and it's awesome that 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 we're all showing up with this like our lab coats on. You know, it's um yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, like I love the fact that uh, any creative impulse, if it's strong enough, usually people somebody will join who had a similar impulse, or, or they go like, oh, what's happening? Let's go. And how amazing, I mean, world-class teachers here. It's not just, I mean, I hope everybody knows what they're getting. Like world-class <laughs> leading master teachers. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you know, there's something else too that, that um, there's, when I was first starting this, I would, I remember I called Leonard on the phone one day and I was like, I've been radiating in the park all day. And I just, I have a question about something, you know, and you just like a check off nerd, you know, but um, we really do have to practice this stuff at home. And sometimes it's hard to get over that hump of like how to practice on your own. And, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of great, Don. there's like, private and public today, you know, and I think it's a really kind of interesting topic, um, you know, how to, how to create space for yourself privately and how, and how then we could maybe encourage ourselves to bring that on set, you know, or in the rehearsal room, which sometimes feels anything but, you know, say for private or something, but, but even just for our own practice, um, you know, I think that working like this at home, though there's a struggle in those, sometimes it's not an even exchange. Um, it's a really good practice to, to study at home by yourself. Really appreciated that private. Yeah, and just tagging in on that, um, when you're reading Chekhov's book, and you know, now would be a good time to reread his books. Um, he has so many times where he shows you how to do it on your own in your house. I mean, half the book is about how to do that with little exercises. He spelled some beautiful ones out for you to do. So you have plenty of, um, inspiration and guidance there. No questions at all. Any comments, experiences, any sharing? You are so important, everybody equally, even though I was delighting about uh, Don and Bethany, everybody here is just equally as important because we're in this together, right? So uh, if anybody wants to share, right? <laughs> Albina? Yeah, I just don't know where I have to put this hand, what is uh, coming there. Uh, I'm technically not really used at all yet. Uh, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I just want to say, um, really, it's just a magic uh, what happened for me today, because I was totally not, uh, I just so uh, Facebook uh, post about that when it's already started and I just jump, jump in and uh, I thought I will be just observing and uh, uh, hiding for the whole time but I don't know you took me in uh, I even didn't realize that I'm in and my husband had to run away for, to another room <laughs> from here but it's just the magic. I didn't uh, work with Chekhov technique for a while, and uh, the it's it's just so magic. And what you're doing, uh, 
I'm just very emotional now because it's it's just so amazing that I didn't have a chance to do that for some time. And now, indeed, I'm in the space with the best teachers, and uh, I'm really so thankful for that time. It's a little bit contrasting to every everything what everybody's saying, but for me, is the magic happening what you're doing? Thank you very much. Thank you. I would share also. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for a really slow work. I really appreciate writing so slow. To, um, I, I need to experiment with the numbers. Um, um, I think your audio is breaking up a little bit, at least in my end. Are you wearing headphones? No, I'm trying to do something. Maybe um, try to go closer to uh, whatever you're doing. Don't move, maybe. I don't know. If yeah. you can. can you hear me better now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I just uh, shared something small that um, because of no work, I was able to really listen between the gestures and um, so that I could sense when the radiating become receiving. And then the, the gesture was born from this transition. It was really happening just from listening. It was Beautiful. great. That's, that's wonderful. And then I'm growing one more thing is just to, um, uh, just an action of just touching the table um, while I'm changing between the gestures and the centers and the whole connection with the table was very different through the the whole part it was very interesting also to share this sensation with a partner later on and adding text so it was really great thank you wonderful Hello. I don't know how to turn my thumb off. Um, if I click on it again, will it go off? Mari Rika, help turn my thumb off. Okay. Um, uh, several things. One, thank you for reminding me about it's the doing and it's not having to do it right. I'm one of those that's cursed with, am I doing the exercise right? If I get it right, it'll be good. And so I love being reminded and taken through exercises when I can practice my doing whatever that means to me. And you asked how this worked for you. Um, another important thing is I liked, I wish we had more time in the breakout rooms. I think that's a really cool idea to give us some exercise to do alone and then to have the breakout where we can work more intimately with someone. That was uh, first time I was in a breakout room and that was really cool. And then the third thing I wanted to share that was really good was this connection with the camera because there's so much self tapes right now. And in LA, there's a bunch of casting directors and stuff that are doing open calls. So it's really important to be reminded to take the time since I'm here to center myself and find my centers and feel the energy and then relate to the camera as if it's just observing me being me. So I don't have to think of, okay, I'm gonna go. You know, so thanks for those three things. John and Bethany, do you have anything you want to do before we wrap up, if there are no more? Or do you want to actively wait to see what happens? What do you want to um, Okay, I've seen people try this and I want to try it. Can we toss the hoop? Can we just see what would happen if we did it? Okay. For those who don't know, 
Do you want me to unmute everybody or do you want me to keep people um, muted? What do you want? It doesn't matter. Okay. I hope you can see it. those who are just on audio, just imagine us all picking up the golden hoop and throwing it together. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do. <laughs> I feel like that could be a whole workshop just doing toss the hoop on Zoom. <laughs> Maybe a clown workshop too. <laughs> this was awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you all. It was beautiful. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Maria Rika. Thank you, everybody. Thank Next everybody. Sunday, we'll have Jessica Cerullo. Uh, and uh, I don't know how many hours she's going to teach, and we'll see. Maybe some feedback uh, on, on some Sundays might be shorter, depending how many people we are teaching. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great amount of gratitude. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm just bye. gonna go to linger before I end it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bethany, I should go. No, she's here. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you ladies soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.